Hi everyone, welcome back yet again to the Reinvent Health Podcast. This afternoon I chat with Gary Jackson from Jackson's Real Food Market. Gary is no stranger to the show and we've hosted many a store tour, video series and book launch together. Today we're chatting about real food. There's a lot of confusion about what it means to eat real food as opposed to processed and ultra processed foods and how they affect our health. We will also be talking about our upcoming masterclass starting on the 23rd of May. This will take place over three Thursday evenings live at the Bryanston store and will give you a chance to really understand how what you're eating is affecting your health and longevity. We will debunk many diet-related myths and teach you how to nurture your brain and body with real food. I can guarantee that by the end of this masterclass, you will never go looking for a diet ever again or be tempted to try a fad that you see online. Knowledge is everything, so please don't be shy to come armed with all of your most controversial questions. Some of the topics that we will cover include understanding macronutrients and how they affect you at different stages of life. Also, how much of each macronutrient you should be eating and what that actually looks like. How to create a meal plan that isn't time consuming and will please your whole family. Nutrition and brain health. What your cravings are trying to tell you and how to take the hassle out of food prep, as well as how flavor, texture, scent, and color affect brain chemistry and cravings. Psychoneurobiology, which is the brain-body connection, and accountability and health, why you need a guide through this process, as well as the benefits of exercise for your brain. To find out more or to book, please go to my website, reinventhealth, or one word, .co.za, or visit any of our social media channels and follow the links or simply WhatsApp 083-265-5862. Please enjoy. So Gary, thank you once again for joining me on the Reinvent Health podcast. It's been a while. You've been on the show a number of times, but I really, I think the last time you were on this show was closer to COVID when we were trying to just understand what was going on in the world. Um, and we've come through that, hopefully the wiser. And now we're going to talk about real food. So thank you for joining me today. Why do you think there's so much confusion about what to eat? Yeah, it's a great, uh, great one. Um, I think that people are now being bombarded with so much information, whether it's through social media or websites or friends, and everybody's got their own interpretation yeah. of, of food and diet. And it gets really confusing. I think you come out of a dinner party or a function or a meeting, sometimes really dizzy. So uh, that hasn't helped the cause at all. And it's actually really quite simple. It is simple. And I think people are always looking for something expensive and complicated because we've been taught that simple things don't work. Or I don't know why. Why do you think that's the case? Um, it's it's you know the, the the and the background to to the food industry isn't a pretty one. It, it's it's people trying to make a profit. It's shareholders trying to extract maximum profits out of these uh, supply lines. Um, and it's not pretty. There's a lot of monopolistic behavior. There's a lot of price control. There's a lot of abuse of supply chain uh, producers and farmers, you know, so that they actually don't always get a fair price uh, for their product. Um, so so there's a hell of a lot um, broken. And for a consumer to walk into a store and know that they're getting a good deal uh, is tough because they don't even know what's in the product the, the the labeling of of products isn't um managed the way it should be and you know that also leads to confusion and you know sometimes when there are 32 ingredients in a pack of poloni you know bullshit baffles brains and and unfortunately that's kind of okay so you know I don't know what to do next. This, this is very confusing. You know, what do I look for? And then you tell people, well, just buy something with one or two ingredients in it. Um, and it's also not great advice because sometimes things with 10 ingredients are amazing. Uh, and other times something with two ingredients, which is uh, flour and sugar, 
um, isn't great, you know. So so you end up going in in circles. Yes. You do. So there's a lot of people who listen to the show who know you, who shop at your store, who've been to your store tours. But for those people listening who don't know you, who you are, can we give them a little bit of background? Because I think your experience in the food industry is vast and it covers so many different areas of the food industry. You're not just another guy talking about healthy food. You really have been there and you've You've been on both sides of the fence. So let's let's give them a potted history of where you came from and how you got to this point. Okay. So the short answer is uh, I came out of the fast food industry of all places, uh, yeah. which isn't real food. It took me a while to, to work that out. Uh, we're talking 30, 35 years ago. But I learned a lot about what not to eat uh, in, in that journey and what not yeah. to eat a lot of. Uh, and and what to eat more of um, that would balance out your health, you know, and kind of seeing your body as a Ferrari or a jet, you know, you can't fly the thing without having the dials and you can't fly the thing without or drive the thing without really knowing and understanding the car or, you know, the jet plane. So, you know, the first step is to get people to kind of understand that, uh, what what in their body works for them makes them feel better, and what what uh, doesn't? And that's a weird thing because people just eat because you eat. Everyone eats Kellogg's, so we'll all eat Kellogg's. They haven't really been trained to think about how does it make me feel? Does it you know fuel me for the day? You know what's my vitality like? What's my personality like? What are my moods doing? And, and, you know, how do I feel when I slump down on the couch? Do I collapse in a heap um, and then just sleep until the next day? So there's a whole lot of things that, that you've got to look at. And the more you understand yourself, I guess it's like that with psychology, it's spirituality, it's all of that. You know, it's an inward look to say what works and what doesn't work for my body and what will optimize and maximize me to have not just the best life, but also to be the best father, mother, uh, sister, whatever, granny, grandpa, yeah. whatever it is, you you want to be that best person. And so you want to optimize yeah. yourself. I like what you said about how we're not trained to think for ourselves. <clears throat> and I think this in itself is becoming more prolific because we are fed so much online and we're told so much. Yeah. And we're almost looked down upon when we question things, which is nonsense. Um, and we are not taught to introspect when you eat something, what does it do? How does it make you feel? That's such a good point. And I think this is also because many, many people are so used to feeling really bad that they've normalized that, you know, nothing irritates me more when people say, well, I'm overweight because of menopause or because it's a function of age. It's, it's simply not. It's a function of the actions. It's what you're putting in your mouth. You're directly responsible for how you feel. Um, and what you said about mood. So I remember you telling us a story about, I mean, you were really ill because you were I mean, you were working terrible hours. You were working in the, fa in the fast food industry for one of the most famous fast food brands. And you became really ill. And I'd like to know, you know, you, from your journey, how it was a slow boil. You know, how, when did it, what did it take to get to the point where you, like you say, you checked yourself into the, wanted to check yourself into the ICU. What did it take to get to that point where you were at breaking point? Yeah, um, I think firstly, I had no clue how to drive this oh. car of mine and what on this car of mine didn't it like. It didn't like no rest. It didn't like extreme stress. Uh, it didn't like um, having to uh, not be fed at normal hours and, and be fed only when my blood sugar dropped. It... Um, didn't like the fact that I wasn't eating enough plant-based foods. Uh, and it was essentially my, my diet because of where I worked and the proximity of the next possible supermarket, uh, you know, where I could find something reasonably healthy was, was just miles away because we were, you know, running a drive-through operation. So, so it became, it became 
it became uh, terrible slowly, if that makes yeah. any sense. It kind of just creeps up on you. But like often people say that, you know, the frog in the hot water, as it's getting hotter and hotter, you just don't realize it. But what did become apparent was that my cognitive ability dropped. In other words, I my memory was the first thing that started going. Then I got blurry vision or brain fog. I don't know what they call it, but all I know, it was a feeling of like, I think I'm yeah. shutting down. So, you know, again, no one is supposed to eat that amount of uh, fast food and have that amount of stress all at the same time. No exercise, hardly out in the sunlight, but just really just working uh, flat out, you know, because a lot of youngsters are like that. They're pursuing oh. their careers. They'll do what it takes to get to the top and to be the best person they can be and to be able to provide for their family. So it's not like wrong, but it was just realizing that, you know, when you start getting rashes all over your body and your blood pressure suddenly crazy high and your cholesterol's out of place and, you know, you can't remember yesterday. And, you know, th then then it's a, it almost like it was slow, um, Nikki, but then it suddenly just went to a point where it was like fall yeah. off the cliff. You know, then it was, like, um, it's too late now. Um, and, and that's with any health condition. I mean, even with a, with a, a thing like a cancer, you know, the quicker you pick it up and do something about it, the more, and I didn't, I left it, I left it till the end. And I really honestly felt that the way I was uh, running my life was going to kill me. And I was preparing for death. I mean, I, I was really, really bad. Wow, that is, that's extreme, you know. And what you said is, it's it's never. Um, it takes time, and we ignore symptoms. And very few diseases are very, are quick and overnight, except for like the odd virus, like a cold or a flu. That's pretty quick. But these chronic diseases of lifestyle start years and years before the symptoms start to manifest because it whispers. And if we don't listen to the whispering and the nudging from your body, eventually it becomes a really dangerous disease and we go well now what and I'm sure you get people in your stores every day coming with big eyes and saying to you help I've been diagnosed with diabetes cancer heart disease high blood pressure I've been told I need to start eating right and no one's given me advice no one's told me how to eat right and I'm so confused what are the most common things that you see coming into your store disease profiles people who are desperate to to change their their health yeah so um you you get this we, we get three types of people coming into the store one would be a sports person who understands their body but wants to be filled at optimum but like a racehorse they just want to eat the best um protein and plant clean plant-based products without pesticides and nonsense then you get a mom who wants to feel her family and her husband uh, or the other way around the husband who wants to feel the the wife and the kids uh with the best possible yeah. nutrients because um, they do understand. And then you get the person that's come out of ICU, uh, which is, it happens all the time. I mean, either cancer diagnosis or a stroke uh, into recovery after a stroke, um, diabetes, massive. Um, people are just eating to fuel themselves and think that if you get the best rand per kilo, it's a great deal and you're saving, but you, you're not saving that much because you're going to get sick and ill and you're going to have all the worst symptoms happening to you, like like what happened to me. So for us, it was about, for, for me, the absolute turning point in my life was when I started eating cleanly and I didn't think of how, I didn't even know where to look, but I met someone who understood the Mediterranean diet backwards and said, look, this keeps people in, you know, Greece and Italy and Spain alive until they're 100 and they're still in the in the fields working. Why don't you try this for three months? And I did it. And the turnaround, Nikki, was unbelievable. It was, it was almost like my body was screaming for just that. Just give me the right fuel and I will serve you. You know, that was the message that I got. And uh, it, it, my health bounced back. Um, from zero to 50% in three months and probably to about 80% after a year. And that was no drugs, all drugs in the dustbin, all drugs, you know, that I was, that everyone was trying to help because I went to every practitioner 
on the planet. But mm. at the end of the day, uh, I needed to eat clean and, and that worked. Whatever it was that was clean, and let me define that quickly for you. It's, it's food that's just not tampered with or tampered with as little as possible. Um, it's got the least amount of human hands on it. It's got the least amount of outside inputs into it. And it's not sprayed. It's not manipulated in a laboratory. It's just pure, good, solid food like our grandparents only had in those days. They only had real food. Yeah. Non-real food came out, you know, in after the Industrial Revolution and, and when the fast food nation started. Um, and unfortunately, it all stems from comp food companies wanting their food to travel from Durban to Cape Town and from Bloemfontein to to Durban, I don't know, um, and and backwards. So you know this whole chase for zero waste food, uh, so that th their product can last four weeks, five weeks, has has been the pinnacle problem, because now your food manufacturer is building food that can last forever but forgetting that the human needs to last forever and how much are they compromising that human's ability to live longer but yes i mean the next question i had was what is the difference between processed food or minimally processed food and ultra processed food and i think you've answered it in saying that it really comes down to shelf life what chemicals have been added in there to make that food last longer but what else do you think is, you know, there's there's the tomato and then there's the, the, the tomato sauce that the nonna makes, you know, the nonna sauce, which is still processing the tomato, but it's not in a way that's causing harm. But then there's the next step when you get it in a, a bottle um, and a plastic ketchup bottle, which and it will last three years in that bottle. That's the end of the chain of the ultra processed food where it doesn't even resemble where it came from. So in your experience, how do we, I've got a client who said to me, and she's been with me for years, and she said to me, what's ultra processed food? And I was like, have I not explained this adequately? And I don't think we do. I don't think we we really understand or can explain or have explained to people, really, what is ultra processed food? Because we've normalized it. What? How would you explain that to somebody who came into your store? Okay, so maybe a good example would be to go back to my example of a poloni. Um a poloni is an ultra processed piece of food. Um, we not no one is yeah. sure, and it'll never tell you on the package exactly what meat and exactly how much meat is in there, and what part of it of the animal is it, and how many times has it been boiled, how many times has it been soaked, in what, uh, how many times has it been through a, a chemical process, a, a machine, how many times has it been extruded? You know, you don't know any of that, but you'll eat it because it's cheap. And you don't ask yourself, well, why is it so cheap? Because it could be, you know, zero nutrition and it's a very cheap thing to, to build. And then on the other side, you'll have a farmer who has, uh, let's say, um, an outdoor reared uh, pig farm and they will process the animals and they'll make uh, a pork sausage with uh, ir non irradiated spices and you know just two or three ingredients. And it would be like the traditional British pork sausage. So, you know, that has been processed, but it's so minimal. It's, it's just been minced, That's right. hand minced, yeah. by the way. And it's it's um, had one or two things done to it, and it's the highly it's very high in nutrition compared to the poloni, um, and the price difference per nutrient or even per taste. You know, you just you got to look at food on how many nutrients and how does it taste and how does it make me feel. Um, you know, if you've got acid reflux like I have, if I eat poloni, you know, I have to worry and and ask myself like, is it right to be burping? Um, you know, the poloni flavor for, you know, two hours after my meal, you know, your, your body yeah. actually telling you, hey, guys, you know, I don't like what you've just given me. And, you know, it's, it can even be a simple thing like broccoli. I mean, you could give a kid broccoli and they would fight and kick. Oh. But in their body, in their, thing, their nose, their palate, nothing in their body tells them that they need that piece of broccoli right now. And they kick and scream yeah. against it. And we force it down the kid. Um you know, and again, that kid 
probably more in tune in terms of their body than than we are because they're still young and you know they they haven't experienced uh, a lot so it's it's really food that is as close to its original form food that ideally has been grown in soil if it's produce and if it's protein that it's uh, been an outdoor reared animal it's a huge difference to a factory yeah. farmed animal in terms of taste in terms of nutrition in terms of texture sure. and there are this uh, the science is there uh, it just you just need to uh-huh. to look at it the problem in the food game is that people choose their science or they choose a part of the science that suits their argument and that's also what brings us back into that loop that you spoke about. Yeah, very much. Um, and it, everything is very, I mean, studies are crazy. And, you know, you can take a part of a study and say, well, a study says X, Y, and Z. And you might be right, but it doesn't prove anything. And the, these things are used for marketing and it's very misleading and confusing for the public. But just to go back to what you said um, that stood out for me when you spoke about the pork sausage is the satisfaction that you get from real food. And when you've got highly processed or ultra processed mass market food, it's not manufactured for satisfaction. It's it's manufactured so that you eat more. So you just don't quite get satisfied or satiated enough so that you buy more, eat more and carry on spending money where real food hits the spot very quickly and you end up eating less. So even though that pork sausage might cost 10 times more, I'm exaggerating, than the poloni, you will eat 10 times less anyway because you just don't need more. So let's dig into the satisfaction index of real food before we go further. Well, one of the things that we really did not know when we started this journey, because ultimately at the beginning, it was... Yeah. Where can I buy nutrient dense food? Where can I buy real food? And where can I go and eat out? Because I couldn't eat out at a single restaurant. And there was no supermarket yeah. that um, had the food that I was wanting. And that was just, can you tell me if this is sprayed or unsprayed? You know, and that was a basic question. They couldn't tell you. They couldn't even tell you where your, your meat comes from. They couldn't even tell you whether it was you know, which country it was from. It was, it was a nightmare. So, so that's where our, our journey kind of started was to say, let's make it real simple. Let's find local farmers. Let's find people who are passionate. And you know, what's crazy about them? Almost every single one of my suppliers came through a terrible health journey. All of them have had a knock with their health because of their, their diet. And they have gone into making food that their bodies Mm. like and then selling it to other people and and that's been an amazing way that we've that we've grown but what i the point i wanted to make was um the one that you said about the pork sausage and and i wanted to swap examples we have just we are just coming out of the apple season so now apples uh only only come off of trees like Three months back from now so let's call it december january february march um and a little bit of april that's the only time in south africa that trees bear fruit and bear apples so when you come into jackson's in the middle of march you pick up a box of organic apples i mean it's 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 because i'm old enough it it reminds me of my of my young days sitting on the pavement as you crunch into that apple you hit you can the juice just jumps out your mouth it isn't even going all in your mouth you the crunch is amazing the skin is awesome you know it's it's and it's and guess what it's actually not that expensive because it's in season and there's an abundance of them but if you go and buy an apple in the middle of uh summer which is not when apples like to to fruit apple trees uh, you will get something that is possibly, and there have been stories of apples being stored for almost a year in cold storage, uh, dipped in preservative chemicals and or covered with wax. Now, the science and technology is amazing and it does these things because that apple on the supermarket shelf looks incredible, but it's not going to have the nutrients, it's not going to have the taste and unfortunately, you're going to pay for it because someone's got to pay for the storage of that apple for that long a time. So, so when we ticked, we managed to tick three boxes, and this is why we've grown so fast. Is does it taste better than the norm? Yes. Does it cost less than the norm? Yes. You know, is the nutrient level higher than the rest? Yes. Uh, and 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 your point has to be made again. 
I could eat a kilogram of poloni and finally feel full and I would have probably two pork sausages and feel as full. So yeah. for the same meal, I'm spending the same amount of money, the exact same amount of money, but on the one hand, I'm eating two amazing pork sausages. On the other side, yeah. I'm eating a whole kg of poloni or half a kg of poloni. And guess what? Five hours down the line, I'm starving after I've eaten the poloni because it's gone through my body. It hasn't been absorbed by my body. Whereas the two pork sausages have fueled me and I don't have to eat again until tomorrow morning if I don't want to. So, so that. That's the whole thing about it actually saves you money is is something that that people have to get into. Now, you know, the, you, we have to say that uh, a massive amount of our unemployed population yeah. and even those people that are, are working on the bread line, it's very difficult for them. It's very difficult for them because they can only afford food that is highly tampered with. Poloni, a maize meal that's been so sprayed um, and genetically modified, it's it's scary. So you know, if a massive part of your of your population are eating in this way because it's all they can afford, that's a that's a really bad indictment on the government and on the food systems in the world. It's not just South Africa. No, it's not just South Africa. And I mean, with that kilo of poloni, you're taking in a kilo of coloring and preservatives and chemicals that are endocrine disruptors, and that cause massive problems down the line. And it can't be proven in the short term, but we all know that in the long term, this is actually what ends up happening. Yeah, Nikki, it's the, it's the autoimmunity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've mentioned it before. That's such a big one. And no one really understands what autoimmunity disruption is um, and what it does to you. And 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 you know if it's happening to you. I mean, most people don't know that. And that's those are the those are the conversations yes. that we love to unpack. And we do this um at Jackson's. We have people around groups of 20, 30, and uh, are you planning? Are you are you planning one with us soon? You know, it's just an enlightenment uh, evening. It just gives you the tools to navigate those aisles and feed your family yeah. for the same amount of money, but by having you know the right inputs. It's 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 actually really as simple as that. So all we've done, Nikki, is we've looked at an alternative food supply to the norm. We have found a good farmer with good soil who knows how to compost who knows how to um, look after that soil so that it can feed the next 50 generations. Um, and that that farmer grows, whatever that farmer grows in his soil is going to be unbelievably nutrient dense because it's it's grown in a medium that is thriving with life. And, and that's energy. And at the end of the day, the more energy, decent, good energy you can consume, the, the more your body will show that or reflect that energy energy that you're consuming mm. so while we're talking about farmers let's talk about traceability because even our biggest most expensive well-known supermarkets in this country and i'm sure it's all over the world talk the talk they make it look as if um their meat and produce comes from free range farms from ha happy animals grazing in pastures and we know this isn't true and if you had to go to one of these big supermarkets and ask anybody there where that cow came from and how it was fed, they'd look at you as if you were smoking something. So in your stores, there's traceability. You can literally meet the farmer and go there and see exactly what's going on. Let's talk about the importance of that kind of accountability when it comes to eating. So uh, the basis of, of our supply program is to have absolute transparency and honesty with the farmer. So what does that mean? It means that we would only pick like-minded farmers. We would only pick farmers that understand how to rear animals, how to grow grass for animals to eat, how to look after soil so that whatever you plant in it. And they've got to be on the same, they have to have the same passion um, uh, because it's not easy. It's not easy to grow things without taking these shortcuts through chemicals and plowing and you know all these other crazy things but again big food can't do this on a big scale they really can't it's just impossible and the cost would be crazy so you know when we're one of those niche um, food suppliers that will harness the right people to make the right products 
that will feed and fuel you know the people in the cities and a lot of our uh, produce comes from out of the city and a lot of people that grew up out of the city love our yeah. food because it reminds them of the stuff that my mother grew outside her house and yes. the sheep and the goats that we slaughtered maybe over a special occasion I mean, that was such a special uh, moment for them. And, you know, yeah. when they come into a supermarket and they can experience that taste, those tastes of of, mm -hmm. of the country, if I want to call it that, the mm -hmm. outside, the rural areas. Wow. You know, that's that's very special because in this in the food game in a city, you're just getting convenience. I mean, they're selling convenience. They're not selling nutrients. Oh. Um, and, and that's where the, the two worlds collide. So in terms of... Uh, getting that's what I mean by a like-minded person who understands that uh, someone that respects the planet and someone that respects other humans and pays people well and runs proper businesses th that's all uh, that comes into the picture and so you know we almost become business incubators where we where we where we show people the way and we help them with their packaging and we help them with the management of their little businesses without having any ownership it's just a mentoring process to say you know you've got what it takes but let's cut your short your school fees short you know let's link you up with other farmers and other producers that have walked this path so that you can get up and running you know much much faster so so uh, in terms of a farm visit and you know in big foods it would be guys with white coats and big clipboards you know running around trying to tick things we we, we bring a customer customers are welcome on the tour, on the farm tours uh, we ensure that the, all the farmers in that area are at that farm visit and we make sure that the retailers that buy that product are also at that farm visit so there'll be about 10 or 20 of us we go around and it's a consensus thing we all we all have the same tick sheet. We all hear all yeah. the questions and presentations. And at the end of the day is, you know, could this farm be deemed as organically grown and organically certified? And the answer is yes, it's a cheap process, but it's so powerful because it's it's transparent and it's and it's by the people. It's like the village comes to 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 sort out the bad guys and and sort out the good guys. You know, so, yeah. so it's it's very much a simple, basic principle of finding passionate people who care about human health. Look, I mean, that just embodies the spirit of Ubuntu, what you've just said. I am, you are, we are. If we don't look after each other, no one's going to survive this game. And I mean, food being so part of mind, body and soul. And I can only speak for us Africans living in Africa, how intrinsic it is to well, obviously all over the world, but I mean, this is so much a part of us and looking after each other is so much a part of what we do in this country, believe it or not. Some people might think otherwise, but it's true that at the end of the day, we all just want to see each other succeed because your success is my success. So, and I really think that that is part of the success of what you do, the 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 energy, what you bring to your stores and your ethos is very much there. So, you know, I think that needs to be recognized. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, it's it's been a hell of a journey, but I, at the end of the day, it's all going to be worth it because, you know, we we are, it's a bit, I, don't, I hate using the word convert, but what, once you convert from, from, and I'm going to use the word crap food to real food, uh, you can't go back. It's weird. Your body will tell you, listen, don't touch that because that's, you know, where's the stuff that you used to eat last month? So for us, we we hate the word diet. Uh, we talk about eating lifestyles. You know, we're not we're not judgmental whether it's vegan or whether it's the carnivore diet. You know, as long as it makes you get up in the morning feel alert and alive and enthusiastic, we, you know, we'll support your eating plan. But you know, if you wake up and eat Kit Kats all day, you're not going to feel fantastic. You're gonna you're gonna have some symptoms, and if you do feel those symptoms, then change course. You know because we we actually the supposed to be the most intellectual beings on on the planet, but we must just act like it sometimes. Act like it sometimes, exactly that. So just we're going to just quickly mention um, the three week masterclass that we are hosting starting on the twenty third of May, and leading into that. What do you think are the mo three mo 
here are two or three most common misconceptions around healthy eating that we're expecting to receive from those in the audience who are planning on joining us at the masterclass. What do you think we're going to be dealing with? So we're going to break it down into like eating for dummies almost. And we don't say that yeah. in, a, in, a, in a condescending way. It's, yeah. it's so intimidating, uh, you know, deciding what to eat and, and, and what not to eat and, uh, you know, without being influenced by all this advertising. So, oh. so when you come into that class, you're going to get to understand yourself you're going to understand what each food group can do for you. And hopefully we're going to teach you a way to monitor your gut health and listen to your body and know uh, based on a number of things, the color of your urine, the, uh, the quality of your excrement. Uh, you know, those are, are, are big clues. And the whole of the animal kingdom use that as a health the first health indicator you know if and and humans do if your if your urine is really dark you know how many people know that all you got to do is drink three or four glasses of water a day and then it's gone you don't need a doctor but you can course correct so it's a whole lot of those little little things that you you might have forgotten it's it's just giving you a solid foundation in terms of you know what i can feel better i don't have to always feel like this we accept that the frog in the tub is, is just getting hotter and we're just going to accept it and please please yeah. you know you everyone out there has to know that there are ways to turn that heat down there are ways to make yourself feel better uh and it's really really simple it's not something hugely scientific and you're not going to walk away confused from this master class you're going to be able to teach other people um yes. the right way and and that's how we spread the message yes you'll become a food evangelist because you'll feel so damn well that you'll tell everybody and it's really really so simple uh, what i love about these classes is the support people give each other so it's all very well and i see people every day i've got clients who come to me every day one-on-one -on -one coaching and that's there's a place and a time for that and it's hugely valuable i've had people who've been with me for years and years but working with a group and knowing that you are not alone, that other people also have issues and also have pitfalls and sharing ideas about how to overcome them together, there's some magic in that. So if anybody has been sitting on the fence, and I know there's a lot of people who've been sitting on the fence wondering whether they should take the plunge and, and get some coaching or go and do a masterclass, now is the time for once and for all to jump in there and find the support you need with other people who are going through, and I promise you, going through exactly what you're going through. And I can promise you as well, this is going to be a lot easier and a lot more pleasant than you anticipate because there's a level of and a sort of trepidation about making changes. Changes are scary, but I can promise you this is not going to be scary. This is going to be enlightening. So anyone who's hesitating, don't let that hold you back. You've got your entire life to live and don't let the fear of perhaps being told, well, you should eat this or shouldn't eat that because that's not what we're going to do. We're just going to give you the facts and the education. We're not going to be there wagging fingers and telling you you're bad if you ate the wrong thing. So that's something I needed to just you know get out the way. Nikki, also, um, you know, it has to be said that the value that you contribute from your professional experience and your experience with so many clients is that, you know, you've probably heard and seen it all. So all you're really doing is sharing the what's really going on out there. And you aren't seeing the healthy people. You're seeing the people that have challenges. And so, you know, you, you're so good at sharing that information and, and, and also explaining why. Because unl until I understood why it's not good to have uh, vegetable oils or canola oil, until I knew yeah. why, then I stopped. But you had to give me a factual reason, and that's exactly what you do. But you go further. You explain not only that. You explain what happens in your body when you when you consume, uh, you know, cheap vegetable oil. Uh, and 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 that for me, uh, when I started working with you, I found a hell of a empowering because I now knew why. And I also you answered the question, well, what's in it for me? And as I trialed new things and tried eating less of this i felt it 
what in what was it that I would benefit? And and that's what most people do uh, when they're sitting behind their little phone scrolling, like what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Is it a bargain or is it something that's going to help? Should I take that fat glass pill? You know, it's it's crazy. But this is real basic stuff where you will walk away with so many jewels and pearls of wisdom that um, you might need to come back and do the course again. You know, in a few yeah. months' time, just to stay in tune, and it is a community, Nikki. We one once we've been through this process, you know, you 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 have a community that shop together. You, you we are always available at any time, uh, and yeah. and so help is out there. And if we can't help you, we definitely will refer you to two or three people that we have heard testimony that they can help someone in your condition. It's worth a try. So it'll also shorten your your journey it didn't have to take me seven years to get out of that horrible loop you know we can do this for yeah. you in a month yeah that's true and you know here's a little little thought before we wrap up is that your entire muscular system not skeletal but muscular system renews itself entirely all your soft tissue renews itself entirely in three months which means that the body you have now will be a completely different body in three months time on a cellular level and it's directly connected to to what you're eating. So you are what you eat. So within three months of doing that course, you could have an entirely new system. Um, and you know, it sounds a little bit peculiar to say that, but this is a fact, and this is quantifiable, measurable, provable. It's nothing new. But when you think about it from that perspective, that's a bit of a profound thought because you're changing your health destiny. And I think that is so powerful especially like you say you're doing it with a group you're doing it with the support and community is so important as well absolutely i couldn't have said it better if anyone listening wants to book they can talk to either of us directly they can contact us through our social media channels i will put a link to how you can um, uh, sign up on the in the show notes but it's all over both of our social media pages links in bios on facebook in linkedin or you can, um, I think you can also sign up in store. Um, there's a poster in both the stores with a QR code. If you just scan the QR code, it'll take you directly to the page. There is a, There are a hundred ways to sign up. So there's really no excuse not to go ahead and book. These three weeks can change your life. I promise you that. Great. I can't wait to get this going. And um, yeah, I heard that you're almost half full. So I think we'll have to even start planning the next one but uh you know if if your listeners act fast they can still get in on this first one which i think yes. will be a, a, a big one because it's one of the yes. the first ones we've done you know as a as a structured force together yes and it's going to be super fun and entertaining and you'll get to eat really good food as well that's very important to know yep that sounds great okay. so gary thank you again have a fantastic weekend i hope you're taking it easy um and spending time with the family and looking after yourself and we will chat soon awesome nikki thanks again for the opportunity